So this one. Okay, so hey and welcome to Korshal Simulatum to AI Virtual Visit of CMS Detector and Hyperscience. So my name is Adelina Lindvorota and I started studying physics in Ekenes when I grew up. But now I am a doctorate student in Hyperscience. And it's a place where you may have heard about it, but you can also learn a little more about it today in this one-time virtual visit you have. Så CERN är ett internationellt samarbete, det vill säga att flera olika nationer samarbetar tillsammans för att uppnå ett gemensamt mål. Och eh, ni kan tänka er att vi kanske inte pratar svenska här <laughs> allihopa. Eh, det vanligaste språken är engelska, franska och italienska. Och eh, vi kunde tyvärr inte hitta en annan svenskspråkig guide i, idag, men jag förstod att eh, ni var okej okay med en engelsk eh, visit. Så jag är här och jag kan översätta vad som helst i svenska ifall ni vill, vill veta någonting eller om, om någonting är oklart. Och ifall ni vill ställa frågor, um, ni kan ställa dem på svenska eller på engelska, det är helt, helt vad som känns rätt för er. Men att um, ja, uh, vi byter nu till, svenska, äh, till engelska, men så att ni vet, ni kan alltid fråga på svenska och, och uh, ni kan fråga uh, när som helst under visiten. Okay, I'm going to switch to English now, just to introduce you to my <laughs> colleagues. <laughs> so uh, I just said that uh, my name is Adelina Lindroto, and here to my right I have my colleague Joanna. Hey. So she's also a doctoral student here at CERN, and um, you are all in sixth form. So I guess in one or two years you're going to be given a chance to choose if you want to go to university. And uh, you might be familiar with the fact that if you go to university, you'll start as a bachelor, and then you want to learn some more, you continue as a master's student. And then if you want to really become an expert, you decide to take a PhD or become a doctoral student. So, Joanna, do you feel like an expert? Uh, not yet, but uh, it's the process is ongoing. So I'm in the third year of my PhD, and maybe I can tell you a little bit more how it looks like. So I, I'm a Swiss student, I'm studying here in Switzerland, and um, yeah, it's a. Uh, <laughs> not sure what to tell you about, but it's a, uh, it's a fun uh, uh, part of studying, I think, to, um, be to, to try to be an expert in the field and to develop your skills in in specific domain. Yeah. And so we will try now in the, during the store to share uh, a little bit of knowledge that we've learned. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. We have some slides prepared with just a little bit of kind of an introduction to what we do here at CERN. Uh, to give you an idea. Um, right, I hope you can see the slides now. So we can go to the first slide. Uh, I told you that CERN is a very international place, international collaboration. So here we have a map of all the nations which are participating in this common goal we have of studying um, the universe and learning more about, uh, about the universe and the particles within it. So Finland, you can see there in dark blue, is a member state of CERN. So it's a key member of, of CERN. And before I became a doctoral student, I was actually working at Helsinki Institute of Physics. That's one of the um, collaborators. Uh, if you wanna work in Finland and you wanna work at CERN, you can collaborate via uh, HIP Helsinki Institute of Physics uh, and come to CERN and work here. And that's what I actually did the first time I came to CERN. Um, so in the next slide, you'll see where we are currently. So we are currently uh, in France, right on the Swiss border. Um, and this is where the research instrument, instruments are, are located. So we have all these collaborators from all around the world coming here to work together um, um, to study, study particles. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so on the next slide, um, I just... Uh, wanted to give you a bit an idea of, of what a particle is, because you might have heard the word particle being used in many different, uh, has many different meanings. And when we talk about particles, we talk about the, the smallest kind of building block you can imagine. So you have probably heard of atoms, but you can go even smaller than that. And, and um, these particles are so small that you cannot see them with your own eyes. And therefore we build these enormous mic microscopes. Um, which one of them here, the Large Hadron Collider, which you'll learn a bit more about, um, is used to study these particles. And we need these enormous instruments to be able to study 
these particles, which are so, so, so tiny, we can't even see them with our own eyes. So on the next slide, um, you can see here, <laughs> so the, the uh, Large Hadron Collider has the circumference of 27 kilometers. So I, I try to kind of draw a circle on the map uh, around Koshfall for you to uh, get an idea of how enormous this is. And the reason why we have it so big is to be able to get up to very high energies because we want to accelerate the particles to high energies. So we, we, require, um, we require an accelerator this big. So this just gives you an idea of how huge these instruments are. Um, yep. So and then on the next slide, um, this is another huge instrument. So this is the CMS detector, which Joanna will show you um, in a couple of minutes. So she will take you down and you will be able to see this thing. So you can see people here uh, in scale and how huge this detector is. So it's 21 meters um, uh, wide and 50 meters in diameter. And this is basically the detector we, we have here at CMS to detect particles. Um, but again, just getting an idea of how huge these instruments are. And you'll, you'll get a better idea when Joanna shows them to you as well. On the next slide, uh, I just have a bit a picture of the complex. So CMS is one of the detectors there. You can see um, its name up on the ground. But actually, the detector itself uh, is uh, located 100 meters underground. And the LHG is this 27 kilometer particle accelerator, which I, which I showed you. Uh, kind of the size of compared to first home. So on the next slide, you'll see that at the moment, Jana and I are uh, where it says the arrow Adelina, <laughs> because this is where I will stay during the visit. But Jana will go down 100 meters underground to the actual detector to show you the detector. Okay, and then on the next slide, um, just to give you, uh, again, a quick idea about the particles. So you, I'm sure you've all heard about molecules. And one such mo uh, one molecule, for example, is DNA. So you probably have studied in biology. And the DNA is made up of atoms. So every molecule is made up of atoms. And different types of molecules are different combinations of atoms. And on the next slide, you'll see that an atom is just a, a, a core made of protons and neutrons and um, uh, orbited by electrons. And these are probably particles you've heard of. Uh, but if you zoom in even closer on these neutrons and protons, you'll see that there's even more particles. And this is what we're really interested in here at CERN. So on the next slide, you'll see kind of a table of all of these elementary particles which we're interested here. So as far as we know, this might not be true. We think that these are the smallest uh, building blocks. We cannot go, there's no particles inside of these particles, <laughs> so to say. These are the smallest um, particles that we have in our universe. However, it might not be true. This is our current best theory of how the universe works. Maybe true partially. Maybe true partially. <laughs> <laughs> there are many theories, for example, that the Higgs boson is a composite particle. Um, um, and this, this theory that we have, it's not perfect. So this is the best we have, but it's not perfect. And we're, we're studying it here at CERN to be able to learn more about it. So for example, we have a theory of how things work. And if we, if we um, research, if we look even deeper into this theory, and if we realize that our experiments show differ differing results to our theory, then we know that, okay, well, this is something missing here. This might be a reason why, why our theory isn't perfect, because it's not perfect. We know it's not perfect, but we, we don't have, the, we don't have the, the missing information yet. But that's what Joanna and I are trying to find, and everybody else here at CERN. Um, so then the next slide. Uh, just a couple more slides to show you a little bit more about what's here at CERN. So we have this particle accelerator. I told about the LHG, the 12, 27 kilometer long particle accelerator. Basically what it does is it, smash, it smashes particles together. So here you just have a very simple picture of kind of how CMS works. We have particles. We have these two scientists throwing bottles at each other and they contain particles. And then we have a person in the middle taking a picture of what happens just, just at the collision. And on the next slide, you'll see it's kind of What's happening here? We have the the particles in the in the vials, and then we have the detector, which is the camera. So what we do is we just we accelerate particles in LHG, the 27 kilometer long particle accelerator, and then when we have them at just the right energy, we collide them with very high energies, and we take a picture of what just happened. And by by uh, looking very very carefully at the picture, we will have an idea of what particles interacted. Well, how the particles interacted, what happened during the collision, and this will teach us more about our universe.
So I think that's probably good actually for the slides. I had a couple more, but I think maybe we can actually start moving to show you because now you have a bit of an idea of, of um, what we're doing here. We're basically looking at particles. We're trying to learn more about the universe and we do so by <laughs> very violently with high energy smashing particles together. So as I mentioned, I'm going to stay up here and Joanna is going to uh, uh, go down 100 meters underground to show you the detector. Um, and yeah, I just want to remind you that if you have any questions, you can ask them whenever. Man kan också ställa dem på svenska. Um, eller om ni vill att jag ska förklara här någonting som var lite oklart. Och jag ber redan om ursäkt om min svenska för att jag pratar nästan aldrig svenska i tiden. <laughs> Så den är, den är lite, lite hastig. Um, what you can see behind me here is the control room. So I showed you this huge detector, uh, the CMS detector. And everything you see here, and actually more which you cannot see, is required to run it. So there's probably 100 uh, monitors here, computer monitors, which are just showing, uh, uh, monitoring everything. And um, and then there are people monitoring the monitors to make sure that, <laughs> that the plots look correct. So that it's a huge effort. And um, I think they could run around. In the yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll uh, shortly see as well, Joanna will show and we have as well Zoltan and Noemi here. I forgot to, to present them. <laughs> uh, lovely people who are, who are taking care of all the technical parts and will also pitch in with physics because they're also physicists. Um, they will show a little bit more about the control room. Um, and you can see that Joanna is currently wearing a helmet, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is very important because CMS is basically like an open construction site. So we have a lot of... Um, uh, how do you say, we take measures, safety measures. So for example, wearing helmets, wearing safety shoes and such. So as Adelina mentioned, this is the, the steering uh, wheel of the, of, the, of the detector and you have quite a many people usually in the, in the control room uh, while it's operating. Now we are in the, in the break period, let's say. So there's quite a few people, but you can see there is a, a, a technical leader, the shift leader. And there is another person sitting in the other part of the room, the, the technical shifter, and they are taking care that the uh, sub detectors are, or the, any alarms, any any messages that are popping up, that uh, they are communicated and the systems are, are operating safely. You can, for example, we, maybe we can go for some, some screens. There is a screen showing up what's the status of the magnet and this is um, quite exciting because we uh, recently it, it was recently ramped up so what it means it's you can see there it shows that there is like 3.8 tesla it's the magnetic field of the of the um superconducting solenoid that it's inside the cms volume and uh, so it's it's basically ramped up so that it's preparing for the for the operation that it's coming in the in the next months. So there are many many screens that you can see all around me. There's uh, 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 yeah many <laughs> different things that have to be taken care of. So many cameras, for example, you can see the safety uh, gates and ports all around the the CMS area, or or you can even see the scheme. Uh, up there with the, the, um, the scheme of the CMS with some radiation monitors that are showing us if it's safe to enter. And yeah, um, maybe we can also go to the other side. You can see there, there is also like many green or, and some red buttons around here. So the, these are basically um, deadlocks which, which, which concern the detector in, in, infrastructure and they allow, allow for quick actions for, related to um, uh, the detector subsystems and, and also a magnet for example uh, yeah or, or the beam even there is one button just here which allows you see that it's protected with a glass because it's in, not, you're not supposed to touch it in, in case of like real emergency but in principle, you can actually abort the beam. So while it's circulating and something um, happens, there are extreme losses or, or um, and you want to dump the beam so you can do it with this button. Okay, we can move on to the, the next room, I guess. So I will move on to the adjacent room and there's even more screens here. Hello, everybody. So we, 
we are introducing the tour. So in this room, um, the, there are people working related to the, um, the different subdetectors of CMS. And that and Adelina, I think Adelina will introduce it a little bit later. But in the in the CMS volume, there are different part, uh, types of detectors, and there is a tr tracker system, and there is a separate people working with the with the trackers, separate with the calorimeter, and so on. So I think we'll go into details later. But it's just to show you that it's um it's quite empty actually right right now here. But uh, normally during operations, there will be many more people working on on each subsystem. So let's go uh, to the current. Nice. So. Um, you will shortly see Joanna passing through a type of door, a type of gate for security measures. So I just mentioned that we have a lot of safety measures here at, at CMS, like just a helmet. Uh, we all have badges to show that we have um, the right to enter this premise. And you'll actually see her now pass through a door which um, has an iris scanner. <laughs> so it's actually gonna, uh, a picture has been taken of her eye. And then now she enters through a door and her iris is gonna be red. And that way they know that Joanna, who has the right to enter to the detector premise, um, is the one who's trying to enter. So you can actually see now it's reading her iris. And then it's going to, OK, cool, Joanna can pass. <laughs> so these are just a couple of the safety measures which are taken here, um, which is always exciting uh, when you when you get to pass through this door. And now Noemi is following. The, the thing that Noemi just read um, uh, her kind of identity with as well, it's, um, um, it's something that kind of tracks the radiation level to make sure that that um, it's safe for you to be down there, that when you come up, you can make sure that you didn't. I mean, it's not very common to have high radiation levels when the detect when the, when there's no particles in the LHC. Uh, but it's just for safety measures because there might be some residuals. So now they are going to the elevator and you can see the danger magnetic field. So this is actually something, so Joanna showed that the magnet has been ramped up to 3.8 Tesla. And the reason, I didn't really mention this, but there's a reason why we have the magnet in CMS. And it's kind of clear when you think about particles and what happens to charged particles when they go through a magnetic field. And um, uh, I'm not sure if you've studied this, but it might be that you had this in electromagnetism course. And basically what happens if you have a charged particle going through a magnetic field is that there will, there will be a force exerted on it and it will move in a kind of circular pattern. And depending on the charge of the particle, it will move to the right or it will move to the left, depending on the, on the field, the magnetic field, but also the charge of the particle. So we use this here at CMS by, by uh, inserting a artificial magnetic field. We put the magnetic field there on purpose. And then when the particles move through the magnetic field, positive particles will move one way and negative particles move another way. And this way we know the electric charge of the particles. And this is one of the puzzle pieces we need to be able to kind of piece together what happened and which particles are part of the, of the collision. So Joanna and Noemi are about to take the elevator down 100 meters. It might be that we lose connection with them because they go hundred meter underground, so <laughs> there might be some connection issues. But it might also be that you'll be uh, you'll be able to see um, see them descending down um, down to the detector. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. You can see them now. They're starting, and we love them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so they're real soon. Um, uh, emerge back again with the, with the connection and um, uh, they will take you through the different levels uh, before they go down to see the detector and um, um, one of the first things that they will pass through uh, is the, the counting room mm -hmm. right? yeah so here at CMS we have um, um, we have the particles interact and uh, in collisions and they will produce more particles and this is what we want we want to produce more particles because actually we, what we put into the detector is very common yeah we put in very common protons and um, um, we want to produce more interesting particles um, maybe you, you still don't want to take over here and explain a bit what they look at okay Joanna? Not hear you. Maybe. So we are, can you hear, hear us? Yeah, now it's fine. It's fine. 
Okay, great. So we lost you for a moment, but then we, we came back. Um, so we are we just descended uh, to the to the cavern. So we went as Naomi was trying to show you about a hundred meters below the ground. So now we are in the cavern, and this is still like we are we are in the corridor, but maybe we can point upwards uh, to give you an idea. I, mean, I don't know how much you can see of it, but it's an uh, enormous uh, distance to the to the ground, to the surface of the ground. I mean. Um, so 80 meters. 80. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, here is 80. About uh, maybe I'm, I'm not sure, but and you can also see the stair staircase along, uh, along it. We are not actually allowed to walk the staircase. Unfortunately, it would be good training, but good it's not possible <laughs> for the safety reason. So, so this is why we took the elevator. So we have a very nice pictures around here about the construction of the CMS. So be, before um, before we maybe we can start from this side actually because it shows the the excavation so so you can see how the uh, this area looked like before there was any CMS or or any experiment happening it's it was a, it is a beautiful area you see the excavation side you see the, the big hole in the middle so this is the the, the the tunnel that we were just showing you uh, with the camera the, so so the upwards way and um, actually when it was excavated so in the in this picture here you can see all the concrete around the surface of this um of this uh shaft yes exactly sorry i was missing the word and it, it, this was a huge um, um infrastructure um challenge because actually in this in this area there is a lot of um, underground water so it all had to be um protected from the water actually flowing into the cavern because we didn't want to make a swimming pool out of it or anything we wanted to, to do a, a cavern so that we could put the detector safely inside it um so that was the first part and then you can see some of the pieces of, of cms so for example that's the the iron yoke so something that it's um in the outer layer of, of cms and that was actually all assembled on the surface so in in this hall here all the pieces one by one, or like we call them slices actually, because they're, they're kind of like the slices of the detector were, were assembled. And through through this shaft, the uh, everything was was um, carried down. Um, and you can imagine that it was uh, it, it, it took a very long time to actually uh, um, do it. And for for example, some of the pieces were were carried down for for twenty four hours uh, because they really had to be. Um, careful not to destroy something you can see that it's um, basically one can say that they are barely feeding so that there were like a few centimeters um, aperture tolerance yeah left next to the, the shaft wall and you can imagine that this some of these pieces are extremely ex extremely heavy so it's not easy to do lower than down the uh, 100 meters down okay and uh, yep yeah. so maybe we can move on so we are moving now to the next room and this is actually a, a cavern but it's not the main detector cavern it's the uh, area where all the off detector electronics is placed or any electronical systems connections uh, fibers um, so that you think of it as, as kind of a brain of the of our detector and you will find here um, many. So, for example, I can point here that this is a safety system. So, um, there are many uh, programmable, uh, programmable logic units that take care, for example, of the deadlocks to the any power supply. Um, so, you really have to take as there are, as, as you show in the slices of the detector. There are many different elements. So, you really have to each of these these the sub subsystems has each own uh, safety, separate safety systems. Um, apart from that, uh, somehow the, the, the data has to flow from the from the detector into the into this room first, uh, be processed in the first stage, and then we can take it out um, and then so that it can be free of the process and later on analyzed um, for the uh, uh, for the particle searches and, 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 and any like research that it's, it's it's possible to be done on on this data so there's a part that says trigger and adelina i don't know if you want to say more about this part yeah sure so 
um, when you do a, a, a PhD, you become an expert in a certain part. And uh, for me, what I'm working on right now, I'm not going to say I'm an, an expert of any kind, but <laughs> what I'm, I'm working with and studying is actually the CMS trigger system. So um, what Joanna was mentioning about processing this data, so we have the, we have the, the particles colliding, uh, producing more particles. And most of these particles are quite common particles. They're, they're particles we know a lot of information about. They're, they have lower energy. They're not as interesting for us to look into. So what we do then is that we have something we call a trigger system. But you can just imagine that it's kind of like a way to cut away uh, data which we think is not interesting. So, so uh, we have uh, both hardware and software algorithms that basically tell us this was a very high energetic collision. Uh, it contained uh, some interesting high energetic particles. So I think we should save this data and then look at it further um, when we do the analysis. And similarly, it might say, OK, this collision was not so interesting. It contained only these lower energy particles that we know a lot about. I don't think we're going to need to save this information because we will probably not learn so much from it. So this way, we just cut away from this massive amount of data that we have that would be impossible to store and and uh, and deal with on our computers uh, to make sure that we only store the information which we think is interesting. I mean, we, we cannot know if it is interesting. We, we only have a set of rules that kind of make us decide, do we want to store this information and, and further process it when we do the data analysis? Now Joanna is moving away from the counting room and she's going downstairs towards the cavern, the experimental cavern where the detector is. Yeah, so I, you can hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, so we moved a little bit. It's, uh, it's very noisy there, so it's quite hard to actually hear anything. But uh, yes, it's um, uh, now we move on to the uh, connecting part between the co two caverns. And normally, actually, if the experiment would be ongoing, we wouldn't be able to, to go any further than, than this part. We'll show you the door when, when, it stops, when, it, when we get there. Um, but maybe we can show some of the signs, uh, warnings. So you have different <laughs> types of, of safety systems here. And you can see the guy that is on, on the picture, the guy that is kind of sleeping. It's, it's not the it's warning. Time. Sometimes taken up. Yeah, it's, it's not a sign or, or a boring <laughs> sign or something. It's it's actually about the oxygen deficiency um, warning. So if it uh, lights up, it means that you really uh, um, have to uh, move out from this area because it, it could happen that the, the oxygen level is low. Um, yes, and then there are of course many uh, safety equipment available in the in the drawers that we have around here. So in, in case something like that happened, you could have a, a mask that, that provides you with oxygen. Um, what else? Like we have, for example, radiation uh, warning. So that means that there is some radi radioactive sources inside um, that uh, room. Um, but there are also up there, if you can see uh, the radiation alarm unit. So if, if there would be any uh, radiation hazard around here, where, where we are, that would light up and we would be um, notified. Uh, but of course, it, it doesn't happen much. <laughs> okay, let's move on never. a little bit. No, never. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. I wasn't sure actually if ever uh, lit it up. Okay. Um, yep. So. <laughs> Does it look like in the, I'm in the tunnel? It does. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so I'm not I'm not in the tunnel, but it's just the, the picture to show you how it how the the the, the LHC machine, the accelerator, looks like in um, in the tunnel. So because we we are not able to enter there, which which I will just just see the experiment that it's placed on this uh, accelerator. Um, but this is how it looks like for this 27 kilometer circ circumference. So you have a tunnel digged out, and uh, and then you have a huge machine placed inside with the protons circulating around it. OK. So we will have to pass another door, safety door, because so this is the place that uh, this would be the, the last or stop in case the, ex ex uh, the experiment would be running. But since it's uh, not yet, so it's um, the last week, let's say, of the of the running of the of the stop uh, that we can enter actually so you're lucky but i can show you something so as you can see already here we are still 
seven meters of uh, concrete, uh, there's still seven meters of concrete wall between us and the cavern, but we can always see something strange happening. So we, show, we showed you before that the magnet is on uh, and then that it has uh, this magnetic field of 3.8 Tesla, which is its um, nominal, um, uh, nom nominal magnetic field. So the one that we are operating with. And you can see that we can already feel this magnetic field. So actually the clips that I have in my hand and they align with the um, direction of the magnetic field that it's inside the cavern. So this uh, far away from us. Just as a cross check, if you could move two meters away from the, the wall, just to show the audience that uh, it is really not glued together. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> okay. So yes, I'm moving fine. away. And then you can see what happens. There's, yeah. They are not glued. <laughs> we are not cheating. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a good point, right? Yeah, I could actually yeah, could just glue them. <laughs> okay, but we will see what, yeah, what happens where, where we enter. Okay, we need, yeah, we need one minute to change the, the equipment so, and we can enter. So I pass it to you, Adelina, now. Right, so they're going to have to change a little bit the way that they, they hold the camera because we realized that the, the camera that they were using before they entered this door now couldn't really uh, deal with the Yeah, this, this is um, an active uh, balancing of the camera. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. And of course, these motors wouldn't stand the magnetic field. From now on, probably it will be a little bit of shaky because that's yeah. going to be just a simple stick. Mm. <laughs> I think they were trying to enter with the <laughs> having yeah. some trouble entering the door. So, so um, the reason why, so Jana mentioned that if the detector was running, and what she means then is that if the particles were were uh, uh, accelerating in the particle accelerator, uh, you might have heard about this as well. That if you have um, a, a particle which accelerates, it radiates. It radiates. Um, um, <laughs> radiation, it emits uh, radiation, which can be dangerous depending on the energy of the radiation, the amount of the radiation. So when there are particles which are circulating inside of, <coughs> of the, the 27 kilometer LHC, then you're not allowed to go into the, the experimental cavern because it might be, um, might be dangerous yeah. for you. Um, but at the moment we're not, and as Jana said, it's about one more week until that's going to probably start happening. And what's been happening now for the last two years is that we've had the had a shutdown. Well, last year we had a circulating beam, mm, yeah. just just in order to check that the accelerator runs. Yeah. Uh, but then on we had this. Well, the accelerator guys called it yats. Mm. <laughs> the year and technical stop of we we the detector people just called it uh, LS two, the long shutdown yeah, two. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we didn't have beam for almost half a year now. Okay. Oh, they, they turned off. Okay. I, I, I think I give you in. I think they're having uh, oh, yeah, okay. trouble entering the door. No, no, this is this is just simply oh, okay. they are just, just moving from one Got it. Okay, good. Uh, setup to the other, but uh, but now I think they are going to be ready. Yeah. Joanna, are you ready? Uh I'm Noemi, sorry. Oh sorry. <laughs> we have so, we have some access issue uh with Joanna. Hi. Um, yeah. she will she she go up to to solve this issue, um, and in the meantime I go in, but I have to change the the equipment. So still okay. one minute, please. Uh, yeah, no worries. <laughs> okay, no worries. Let me just check her at the same time. Yeah. So, so um, the reason why we didn't have particles accelerating in the beam is because we had a. Uh, we'd had some maintenance of the detectors and, and accelerators, so we had kind of a shutdown where we weren't collecting any more data. And at the, at the time, we took the opportunity to upgrade the detectors, so we made them better to make sure that, that um, uh, we have a better chance of discovering something new, of learning something new about our universe. And um, in about a week, we're going to start commissioning for a new run, so for for a new oh, um, time of collecting data. Sorry, I, I put you on. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> much better. <laughs> so it's very exciting times here because we're preparing to start collecting data again, um, which is exciting for everybody because that's kind of a big thing what we do here at CERN, right? It's not the only thing. I think a lot of people, when they know about CERN, they know about the particle accelerator and they know about um, uh, colliding particles and trying to learn more about the universe. But we have, I think, 
to be honest, I don't know how many people working here, but it's, I think it's around like 10,000 people just like on site, but there's much, much, much more people which are collaborating from their own nation, from their own university. Um, and you can imagine that, um, that with these many people, um, there's a lot of things you can do. So more than just having particles uh, collide and learning about that, there's a lot of innovation happening here within the computer science, um, within IT, uh, within medical um, physics. So some of the things which we use here to to detect particles are then later used within the within the medical field. Um, uh, but from my perspective, since I work with with um, uh, with computing. I know that there's a lot of open software which is created here at CERN and then shared with the world. Um, we, um, another thing that you might have heard about is that the World Wide Web, so kind of the internet, uh, started here at CERN as a way to share data between scientists at CERN. And then that idea was then later um, kind of um, um, later improved or <laughs> uh, uh, worked on to become the internet that we have today. But it's kind of started here at CERN as a way to share information, because if you think on it, the internet is a way to share information with everybody at, uh, around the world. So it started here as a way to share information between scientists. Um, so that's just one, uh, one example, but there's many, many examples about all the innovation that happens here at CERN. Um, <laughs> Noemi is trying to enter into the sector. Oh yeah, she's. Uh, she. I think she is. Yeah. Have, yeah. We can okay. we can switch to her screen. So now At Noemi. At least I add the spotlight. <laughs> no, no, Joanna is upstairs. <laughs> so now Noemi passed through the door, and she's going around this seven meter block of concrete, which is there as a shield to protect from radiation. Um. So. Uh, the seven meter block of concrete is, is, um, is the specific size because we know that that's the amount of concrete we need to stop the most highly energetic, most uh, the, the particle which can penetrate to almost anything, but it cannot penetrate to this seven meter uh, block of concrete. So now Noemi is walking around here and she's um, uh, about to enter into the experimental cavern. This yellow door will lead to the detector. And now she's inside of the experimental cavern. So this place is off limits if there are particles accelerating in the <laughs> LHC. Okay, Joanna is on the way back. Okay, Joanna is on the way back. Uh, so meanwhile, uh, Noemi is showing here the detector. And I had Noemi on the yeah on the left. Yeah, and um, so Joanna mentioned that the detector is kind of made in slices. Um, and at the moment, the detector, at least the part you can see, <laughs> that what we can just see. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I have issue with the with the other hoarder. So. Oh yeah, the mount. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it flips uh, out the, from the mount. Yes, yes. I'm sorry for uh, for that. Oh, no I yeah. it. <laughs> so so what we see now right now is this detector and. Is it, so, is it completely put together, like all sizes? Yep, now it is completely closed. As you might see, not only put together, but the, the AJAF, the screen structure in the middle, yeah. is also in place. And the shielding around the beam pipes are also closed. So okay. we are in, pre in principle, we are ready to run. Hmm. I ready to run. So it's a bit hard to get the idea of how yeah, massive the detector yeah. is, I have to say here. Uh, because at the moment, Noemi is standing up um, kind of in the middle of the detector. So, mm -hmm. so uh, we mentioned that it's um, uh, 15 meters in diameter. So from the floor to the highest point, it's 15 meters. And it's a bit hard to see on the on the camera, but but it's absolutely uh, it's enormous. It's a four-story building. Yeah, it's a four-story building. It's absolutely enormous. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, um, so. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Probably it is better if you hold it in hand. Yes, I do, I do, I do, I do. Sorry about it. Uh, this is the first time this year we, we do it with with this mount. Yeah. Um, I'm just opening the Amazon and, and order another <laughs> mount. So, so sorry. <laughs> yeah. So the, so the detector is 
is we, so we, uh, Sultan mentioned the beam pipe and, and John also mentioned beam a couple of times and I kind of forgot to mention that we refer to the beam um, as this particle which are accelerating around the LHC. So you can see here in, in orange in the center we have a, a beam pipe and this is kind of um, a protective uh, layer around the beam pipe so we cannot see the actual pipe at the moment but that's that's inside of that and it, the beam pipe leads into the center of the detector where the collision will happen. So um, uh, so the collision happens in the center of the detector and then the detector encompasses the full um, uh, geometrical space around the collision point and so basically you can imagine that the, the, the collision will happen in the middle and all around it is a, is a detector part, which is there to detect the particles. And we do this trying to uh, not miss a single particles because if we if um, we were unable to detect some particles from the collision, then that gives us incomplete information and that will then lead to false assumptions about what happened during the collision. So therefore we have this like fully um, enclosed um, collision point. And Joanna mentioned different sub-detectors or subsystems. So I've been referring to the detector as this, this huge CMS detector, this, this, this uh, 50 meter diameter, 21 meter wide thing that you see in front of you. But that's actually then uh, made up of several subsystems, several sub-detectors, and each sub-detector is responsible for detecting different things. So we have a tracker, Joanna mentioned a tracker, and the tracker is there to to detect the path of the particles. So I mentioned that we have the magnet to make sure that the, that the uh, electrically charged particles move in different directions. And the tracker will be able to measure this and tell us, okay, so this particle moved in this kind of pattern and that will be able to give us information about the electric charge, the mass of the particles, several other things. Yeah. Um, other than the tracker, we also have things we call calorie meters. Uh, Adelina, I have something for you. Yeah, we can share this. Until you are not we will switch a little bit down. to the slides yeah. while we wait for Jana. Yeah. Um, so nice. here is actually kind of a, a, a cross section of the detector. So Noemi showed you, you know, this huge thing that was at the moment closed because we're ready to start a new run. But here you can see kind of a diagram of, of uh, a cross section. And um, the tracker is in the, the furthest to the left. It's the first part of the detector. And it measures the path of the particles. And we have here a red particle, which is an electron. It's negatively charged, so it's going to be um, it's going to be have, uh, moving in a, in a in a circular pattern. And then we also have um, a charged hadron just next to the electron in, in green, which is which is positively charged because it's moving in the other direction. So the tracker are able to tell us these things, and then we see a couple of straight lines, and these are particles which are neutrally electrically charged, and therefore they move in a straight line. Um, we have these calorie meters. So we have the electromagnetic calorie meter and the hadron calorie meter, and they measure different types of particles. So the electromagnetic calorie meter measures the energy of the electron and the photon, these ele electromagnetic particles. And then we have the hadron calorie meter, which again measures the energy. So this calorie meter kind of refers to it measuring the energy of the particle, but it measures that of hadrons. Um, and, and hadrons are these composite particles. So uh, the, the electrons and photons are, as far as we know, elementary particles, um, which are just themselves, <laughs> whereas hadrons are these composite particles, which are made up of uh, even smaller particles. Um, we have then the superconducting solenoid, which is this magnet, a fancy word of, of, of describing our magnet, which um, creates this magnetic field. And then at the very end, we have the muon detector. So the muon is a, is a, a, a certain type of of elementary particles, and it's very important for us. CMS actually stands for compact muon solenoid. Uh, so muon is a, a is a, a really good particle for uh, deciding if the if the collision was interesting. If you have a highly energetic muon, it probably means that there was something interesting happening there, and it's worth saving uh, storing the data to later do a data analysis. If I may yes. make a remark here, so what you said is absolutely correct, and but. If you look at this uh, this uh, uh, picture, you might see at the left of the picture where the the particles originate. You have many particles, many different types. But after the magnet, after this object, you have only the muon. Mm -hmm. So it makes it uh, obviously the calorimeters eat up the particles. That's how we measure the energy, and the muon can pass through. That's the well, not the only particle because uh, the the neutrino can do as well, but we cannot 
measure the neutron and very probably something exotic can <laughs> get through, at least we hope so. But the muon is, uh, as you said, is, is a charged particle. We can easily measure its passing through, through uh, 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 gas chambers. Uh, but the, the, the muon signature is very clean. We don't need to take into account uh, many other things. Uh, also, as you said, again, the in the in the proton there are many many things, many particles, gluons, uh, 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 quarks, virtually almost everything, but the muon. So if the muon, if you see a muon coming out from the from the interaction point exactly the time when we had the interaction that we know very well, then you can be sure that something really interesting happened. Exactly. Could you yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, Noemi, is Joanna with you? No, not yet. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> she but in the it. meantime, in the meantime, what I can show, uh, we Joanna mentioned the, the magnetic field in the cavern, and uh, it was behind that wall. We were there. And uh, what I took here is a small wrench. <laughs> and what you can see that this doesn't want to um, uh, be be lowered, so it it is it is stick on the on the magnetic field line. And if I hold it, I try to <laughs> force it to the other direction. So unfortunately, it's not possible to feel it uh, through the through the zoom, but you need a small force in order to to align to the other direction. So that's really cool. With, because their magnetic field is there, before Noemi and Joanna went in the cavern, they were told to don't don't bring your phones or credit cards or anything that might be affected by the electric uh, by, by the magnetic field, <laughs> because you can see. It's strong enough to move that wrench, and and even it, it sticks sticks to the um, for the iron. Okay, okay, it's not strong enough, but here it's fine. Still okay. <laughs> so if you if you forget your tool, you just put it here, and then it will stay. <laughs> until the magnet is on. So we have a slight issue. For some reason, the door doesn't let you on in. Okay. I rush down. I let her in with the with my magic key. Okay. And then. Oh. And then we will. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I let you to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we okay. we were, um, I would, yeah, so Noemi, uh, Noemi, Joanna has issues entering, but the uh, Sultan will come and let her in. Okay, so okay. We were just talking about all of these, you know, uh, safety measures which are put in place to make sure that only authorized people can enter the cavern, and now Joanna is not authorized to enter. <laughs> Usually she is because her work is actually, uh, she actually works directly with the detector, so she works on a sub detector at TMS. Whereas, for example, what I do is more computing, so I sit in my office. Uh, uh tapping on a computer where she actually gets to work hands on with the detector so usually she would be authorized to enter um but uh, in the meantime what i can do i just go there yeah to make cool. a different view yeah that will probably give you a better idea of how big the detector is actually yeah and it is uh, not so far <laughs> And also, if I'm quite far away from the detector, you see the, it's a good magnetic field measurement device. <laughs> okay. Yep. So unfortunately, it does, doesn't look as impressive as when the detector is open, because then you can see the different sub detectors. Um, but since we're preparing to start a new run just next week, uh, everything is closed and ready. Um, and uh, also from this view, you can 
can have an impression about the size of the each element. Yeah, sometimes you, you'll see people standing on this green um, uh, um, steel construction things, and, and then you'll get the, an idea of, because uh, you'll see a person next to the vector and you get an idea of how huge it is. Um, And even we had to build a small bridge to access uh, access this detector. Otherwise, it's not possible. And you see the the, the different levels. So this is the the ground floor, first, second, third level, and then we have the we have the cranes. Yeah. Um, also, what you can see this this red stuff on the ceiling. Um, this is part of uh, uh, the the firefighting system at CMS. So there are there are many safety systems for in case of um, fire. We have a, um, CO two firefighting system, but this one, this red one is a foam blower. So in case of the, all the, all the other lines of firefighting system failed, this is the last resort and uh, just pump in uh, soap uh, bubbles and to put out the fire in the, in the cavern. Never used. Yeah, I was just gonna but ask that. <laughs> Well, was it used to kind of, it, it was maybe used in the beginning when it was tested, but it's never been yes. actually have it, when, had to be used. <laughs> when the detector was not inside, yeah. <laughs> right, so this detector, uh, I don't know about the, the exact number, but it's it's very expensive <laughs> and it's taken years to build. And, you know, it's one of a kind, you cannot go to the store to buy a replica of it. So, so yeah. We don't want to destroy it unless <laughs> very necessary um, to make put out the fire or something similar. Yeah. So yeah, you can imagine that the construction started in the years of 2000. So um, it's a quite old detector, but with new new pieces inside. So during this this log shutdown, what we are just at the at the end, we built a new new sub detectors for example the the jam detectors in the in the end these are muon detectors they are quite new technology but uh, we have muon detectors which are in the butter region and they are 20 years more than 20 years old so so we have a mix of of age of detector pieces and the amount of people throughout the year who has worked on this detector is enormous as well. There's a lot of people coming and going and, and expertise from different universities, different nations, different people. Um, for example, me and Joanna work on very different parts of the detector. Um, She's coming that. Actually, there you see the size of Joanna next to the detector. You kind of got an idea of how huge it was. <laughs> <laughs> like how tiny she just looked next to it. <laughs> And also you see her kind of crouching under a pipe there, like the helmet is good because there's a lot of parts that you might hit your head against. <laughs> ah, uh, yeah. So I give the, the headphones to the journal. Can you hear Hello. Me? Oh, yes, I'm here. Yeah, I was wondering if, if you can hear me. So oh, sorry for the... Yeah. No, no worries. I just want to say we should be wrapping up soon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know you I know you just entered, but uh, please uh, uh, share your wisdom and then maybe you could start coming back to okay. the control room. <laughs> Great. Yes, sorry for the technical problem. I, it's uh, really... It's, it's not easy to, to enter and then there could be many things happening, especially in the period that uh, everything is uh, getting ready for the coming run. And uh, yeah, so we are in the cavern and you can see that even this heavy 
piece of metal it's it's, it's already aligning with the with the magnetic field so this is just to show you the uh how, how it works and then as you know like so here we are let's say parallel or or like along with the texture but so the point is that in the same in a similar way inside the, the detector volume inside the coil of the of the of the magnet we want to have a universal film field so that magnetic field so that in, in when there is any charged particle coming through uh, we can recognize what charge it has because of course if you remember i think you had the electromagnetic classes so that it, depending on this charge it would have different direction um, um either yeah in, if, if it's a positive or a negative charge and so in this way actually after the, the reconstruction we can recognize which of this what type of the particle we actually we measure right so this is how it works and have you um, showed already the whole cms structure so we can see that it's already uh, closed off and maybe we can move on a little bit lower so on the way i can try to say something uh you can see this the orange structure um this is actually where the beam comes inside the cms volume so inside there is a beam pipe which has a, a vacuum inside it's actually the vacuum that we have inside it's um better than the outer space um and inside there the particles that are accelerated in the lhc are coming through into the detector uh, for the collisions and so the, this orange structure is needed in here because we have um so there could be people working around this area and it's basically to protect them from induced radioactivity so even though if there is no beam passing inside the inside this beam pipe and and it's after the experiment and somebody wants to come in and um, do some maintenance or exchange on some intervention intervention the, the, the kind of structures are necessary so that they are safe because everything can get um all the heavy materials can get activated and then you can have a secondary effects that are um harmful for people okay so let's move a little bit lower so that you can have a view from the other side i hope me walking in in front of the cms uh, can give you an idea also how big it is so adelina mentioned that in the diameter um it has uh, 15 meters so we basically to walk around it we need to cover uh, four four levels to walk around it and i, I when, while i'm walking actually the the tiny thing here it's it's changing the the direction right because the magnetic field is closing off so so if i pass from here it, it will actually uh, move in my hand because one has to be aware that the magnetic field that is um generated by the by the super the superconducting uh, magnets it's um more or less 100,000 uh, times stronger than the uh, magnetic field of the on the surface of the earth so try to imagine that normally we, we cannot feel anything from uh from the earth unless you have a compass in your in your head or in your hand that would point you to the direction on the south, south and north pole but here i can clearly see how uh the magnetic field lines are changing around the detector so also we are passing by next to the the um, cms structure now but what you can see here is just the pieces of electronics so as you imagine having this million um millions of, of channels uh for different types of sub detectors detecting particles measuring the uh, position um, or the energy um they uh, we have to take them out some, uh, somehow the, the signals so all this electronic gears is it, necessary so that this detector can be op operated okay thank you joanna i think is it possible for you to move back to the control room yeah okay so we move back in time questions yes so in the meantime while they're they are returning back to the control room um life on the hanukkah fjogor eller om det någonting mer ni vill veta om vi avslutar snart för jag kan tänka mig att ni också vill ta fast och det är tungt att bara sitta och titta på på skärmen så här länge um men Finally, I have no fear go the best at them.
Hur är det? Jag vet inte, uh, brukar Korsholmen komma på besök till Sverige vanligtvis? Jag vet att nu under pandemin så har det ju varit svårt att komma hit, men att vanligtvis kanske ni ska ha besökt Sverige själva. Jo, vi brukar ha alltså var, var, det här och Abin, alltså årskurs tre, mm. så brukar göra alltså ett, ett besök på sen. Okej, okay. och det här är alltså årskurs eh, två nu? Det är årskurs ett. Årskurs ett, okej. Okay. Så det ja. kanske finns möjlighet för att besöka sen då? Ja, att de här kan ju räkna med liksom att de har en chans att komma med till sen. Oh, okej. Okay. No. <laughs> om, om, ifall det, förhoppningsvis kanske det äh, väcker lite intresse för att besöka här. Det, det, det är ju mycket coolare att, att se det själv i, äh, med egna ögon. Men den coola grejen med den här virtuella visiten är att eftersom det är virtuellt så kan vi visa delar av det texten som vanligtvis ni inte har möjlighet att se. Så för, till exempel om ni själva kom hit så skulle ni bara kunna se detekten från en synvinkel, men nu så tog Naomi och uh, Joanna upp där så ni kunde se det från en, från en annan synvinkel. Um, och också när ni kom, om ni ska med design på årskurs så finns det mycket mer annat att, att, att uh, se och lära. Uh, vi har ju flera andra experiment här, så jag jobbar med CMS, vi alla här jobbar med CMS, men det finns ett annat stort experiment som kallas Atlas, som är väldigt lik CMS. Egentligen så gör den exakt samma sak som CMS. Men anledningen varför vi har två stora, väldigt dyra detektorer här som gör samma sak är för att vi behöver dem för att, för att validera resultatet från den andra detektorn. Så om CMS, CMS upptäcker någonting, som Noemi nämnde, det tog 20 år att bygga CMS. Och jag vet inte hur mycket, men miljontals, miljontals år att bygga CMS. Så låt oss säga att CMS upptäcker någonting för att validera upptäckten inom vetenskapen så behövs allting valideras. Det skulle ta oss 20 år och miljontals minuters år att, att bygga ett annat experiment för att kunna validera den här upptäckten. Så därmed har vi två experiment på samma gång som, som, som undersöker samma, samma fenomen. Och vi har också andra experiment, mindre experiment. Vi har två, två här på LHC som, som heter Alice och LHCB. Och de tittar på väldigt specifik fysik här på CMS och Atlas så kollar vi gen, äh, generellt i vad som helst som är nytt. Så vad som helst som går att upptäcka. <laughs> um, uh, vilka nya partiklar, vilka nya fenomen som helst. Men yes. sen finns det med mindre experimenten som Alice och LHCB som fokuserar på väldigt, väldigt specifik fysik. Vi vet, vi, vi vet med väldigt stor sannolikhet att det är något intressant där. Och därmed byggde vi de här experimenterna, de här mindre experimenterna, för att titta ännu noggrann här in, in, in till um, vad som sker där. Uh, och om ni kommer till design så får ni upptäcka allt det här. Um, okay, om det är något annat. Um, Ja, det dök upp en sån fråga, alltså den här, vad ska man ha för utbildning och examen för att jobba på sen? Det är en bra fråga. Um, på sen finns det väldigt, väldigt, väldigt många, många olika människor med olika bakgrunder. Och uh, både jag och Joanna har studerat fysik um, på, på kandidat- och magisternivå. Jag studerar faktiskt fysik på Helsingfors universitet och det är där som jag kom i kontakt med det här HIP Helsinki Institute of Physics. Uh, och fick ett sommarjobb på Stern och därmed uh, um, uh, jag med, uh, hände det att jag fick en, en dokumentplats här också. Men att uh, annat än fysik så finns det väldigt många ingenjörer här, så mekaniska ingenjörer, elektroniska ingenjörer. Um, jag vet inte hur det är på svenska, men cryogenics experts, det här, de människorna som tar hand om um, Um, att frysa ner allting till väldigt, väldigt, väldigt kalla uh, temperatur här. Uh, det finns också många, många um, uh, personer som jobbar inom IT um, för att allt som, um, allt som görs här krävs väldigt mycket IT-kunskaper. Um, i, I mitt fall så är jag faktiskt fysik, men jag tog också ett uh, examen i, i datavetenskap på samma gång. Um, jag måste säga att vi behöver så mycket olika, eh, så mycket olika kunskaper att du kan studera nästan vad som helst och, och hamna här på Stein. Eh, men det vanligaste om du vill jobba med fysiken på Stein så är fysik. Men där finns det också experimentell fysik, det finns teoretisk fysik. Eh, eller så kan du studera ingenjörvetenskap eller så kan du studera eh, IT. Eh, yeah. Yes, ja, tack ska du ha.
Har ni några mera frågor? Vi måste småningom börja avrunda här nu för att de har det här på gång snart den nästa lektion. Jag kan tänka mig att jag ser att resten är faktiskt pågående redan. Ja, um, yeah. uh, I think draw, uh, draw, det, det är no. bara Ja, yeah, det kommer just tillbaka här. Um, så avslutar vi inom, inom en minut tror jag. Yeah. Um, vi kan se en uh, arbetare. <laughs> Så jag som jobbar här. Um, ifall ni är intresserade att jobba på Sverige så när man gör en kandidat um, så finns det möjlighet att komma för tre månader till Sverige. Det finns flera olika program. Och om man gör en, en magisterexamen um, så kan man faktiskt komma ett år till Sverige. Det finns olika sådana här um, uh, möjligheter. Om, om man går på Sveriges egna hemsida så kan man se vad man kan göra om man är kandidat eller magister studerande och också om man är doktor studerande. Uh, Joanna, can you come back to the control room? Yes, they are approaching. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if they were just standing. <laughs> they have... Now they enter. Okay, we lost them. <laughs> uh, I usual. think we will see them just behind our back in a second. Yeah, exactly. I just wanted to show <laughs> both camera images once more. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, welcome happen. back. So we, we are wrapping up now. Um, if the students have to return to or have to go to on to another class. Okay, I think I go. Good. Okay. So thank you very much for attending this virtual visit, and I hope you found it interesting. And and I just learned so they are uh, first year at at sixth form, and on the uh -huh. third year they have the uh, opportunity to come to CERN. So they okay. might still be. Uh, coming to Sweden so in about two years. This will be post-COVID for sure. Yes, I will. well, <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so hopefully this sparked some interest, and you might want to come here. And if you want to learn more about CERN, CERN has a lot of great resources online, so you can just search on CERN's own website and learn more about it, and learn about opportunities for you to come here as well. Um, yeah, and that's it for us. And thank you very much. And do you want to say thank you? Thank you for the for for joining us here. I hope yeah that the, as soon as the if you can, if Adelina said that you had the opportunity to come here, the, the doors will be open and you, you can have a longer tour uh, visiting all the places. And by, see the detector yourself. for yourself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's right. hope so. Perfect. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Have a nice day. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye. 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 Bye